What's going on guys? My name is Noah Gordon and this is Broken Arrow Bison. So there's probably only two reasons why you clicked on this video. Either A, you have followed me from the beginning or you're following this journey of raising the North American bison, or B, you are actually curious about what it takes to raise bison yourself. Well, I wanted to reach out to you guys and talk to you a little bit about what it is like to start a brand new bison herd. So some of you guys already know that I had a herd before this herd you see here, and I had about 15 animals, give or take, depending upon the time of the year. Well, those 15 different animals, I had to sell that herd and start over. Long story in itself but we're on a new farm now and we have started again and we have six bison calves, what you see behind me. So our bull right over here, he is just turning a yearling. Then we have five bison heifer calves over here, just turning yearlings or almost a year. So that is the herd as of right now. So some of the things we're gonna talk about this is this is just gonna be a basic flyover overview of what it would be like to start your own bison herd. So we're gonna talk about fencing a little bit, corralling, feed, and what it looks like to actually get started in this. I've served on the board of directors for the Missouri Bison Association, and I've learned a few things here and there from uh, very experienced bison producers. So let's just start out with the basics. What kind of animals do you get? So my recommendation would be that you start out with a minimum of three animals. The reason for that is these guys are herd animals. If you start out with one or two, they will get lonely. And not just the aspect of getting lonely, their behavior will change. They will become aggressive. They will become stressed. So I would recommend highly that you start out with a minimum of three animals. When I first got started, I bought two at a sale and then I went and bought another one at another sale. So I actually started with three myself. I saw a big change in their behavior from going from two to three. So I would start out with three animals. Fencing. So fencing is a controversial subject when it comes to raising these animals. My personal favorite is high tensile electric and my last farm I had five strand and I've gone to a six strand this time. Didn't have any bison get out of the five strand, didn't have any problems, but I actually had some beef cattle and I had some beef calves that did get out of that five strand. You can look at some of my earlier videos and that explains why I went from a five strand to a six strand. Personal preference, but like I said, I prefer high tensile electric. I know a lot of friends who run their bison in barbed wire. That's fine. Um, things that you need to think about when you're running them in barbed wire is, these guys coat is somewhere around six times thicker than a cow's coat. So that barb going through that coat is going to take a lot more pressure or pushing in order for them to respond, in order for that animal to respond. Well, when you have a lot of pushing on a fence, that causes that fence to break down. When that fence breaks down, animals get out. So think about that. You want sharp barbed wire. If you do run barbed wire, and if you do, I would highly recommend you do a six strand barbed wire fence. So what kind of grasses are we gonna look at? So these guys are on a mix of prairie grass uh, we are located in Southeast Kansas. We've got all types out here. We've got a little bit of fescue. We've got a little bit of brome. Um, we've got a, a fair amount of weeds. So uh, one thing you're gonna think about with these animals is they will eat almost identical diet as cows will. The difference with these guys are is they're not gonna be quite as picky. So they're gonna be just a little bit closer to what a goat would be than a cow would be. They're not gonna go in and clean out brush like goats or anything like that. What I'm trying to say is they will be a little less picky and you can actually get just a little bit more on the land than you can cows. 
Sometimes it's noticeable, sometimes it's not. But in a general sense, they're just gonna eat the same type of hay that a cow would. So your hay bales are gonna be the same. You're not gonna have to worry about anything different when it comes to that. So what ages? Here is something that I think is very, very important and to listen to. So when you're first getting started, I would highly, highly recommend you get calves. The reason for that is these animals can get highly stressed and they are very, very adaptable. So they adapt to the circumstance that they are in. When they grow up on a farm that is 100,000 acres or a couple thousand acres, and then you go to go put them on 40 acres or 20 acres or 80 acres, a good friend of mine once illustrated it this way. It's like taking a child and putting that child into a closet. That child is going to stress out and can have health problems or die. Bison are the same way. If you raise these animals on a small area, 20, 40, 60, 80 acres, they're going to live a lot better and they're gonna be a lot healthier that way. So highly recommend getting calves to start out with unless you know the herd, where it came from. If you have an adult cow that came from a friend of yours that's on a small area, very gentle, then sure, if you understand those circumstances, go for it. But if you don't know the situation, you're getting them at auction or you're getting them from someone you don't know, get calves, highly recommend that. Before you start, find a bison veterinarian. That's something that I did not do. When I first got started, I started having problems. They can have worm problems. They are a little bit more disease resistant than cows are, but they do have their own set of problems. Well, when I had trouble with my herd, I didn't know anybody to talk to. I called around in to different veterinarians and they didn't want to mess with them. A lot of the same tactics are used from beef cattle to bison, but a lot of the veterinarians don't really want to mess with these animals. They haven't studied enough. They haven't really done enough research to be able to know what to do with these animals. So they don't really want to mess with them. So find a bison specific veterinarian. The best way to do that is to talk to your local association, a bison association that is specifically tailored to your state or the National Bison Association. They will be able to help you find a good bison veterinarian and figure out what to look for and what you want to see in these animals to be actually healthy animals. So corrals. Corrals is a important must with these guys. These guys do not take a whole lot of infrastructure. They are not uh, very expensive to raise. The fencing is very similar to cattle. You just need really good fencing. And like I said, I would highly recommend that you use electric fence, but the corral is a big, big topic. So these animals, believe it or not, can jump six and a half feet from a standstill. Now, probably not these calves out here, but a full grown bull has been known to jump six and a half feet from a standstill. That means if you have a normal cattle panel corral that is sitting at five foot tall, these animals will climb it or they will jump it because these guys' tendency is if you put them in the middle of a field like this, they're as docile as can be. Yes, there's going to be times where they're in rut in July and August and they can get a little testy or when they are guarding a calf or something like that. But in a general sense, these guys are completely docile until you take and you can find them to a corral. You will see a different side of these animals once you can find them to a corral. And you better have strong and tall corrals. The corrals need to be made out of metal and they need to be at least six foot. All my corrals that I build are seven foot just to be on the safe side. Some guys I know are somewhere around six and a half, six foot three, but I would highly recommend you go to seven foot corral. I've got other videos explaining what to look for as far as quality 
but just a couple things you really want to focus on is look for a healthy animal look for an animal that's not spazzed out look for an animal that is calm and is has a really good demeanor you really really want to focus on that if you're looking at an animal that just looks absolutely amazing um, but it's just completely crazy in the shoot it's completely crazy being corralled up chances are you're probably going to have some problems with it down the road you might not it might be some circumstance that they might calm down but if you're getting started out and you're new to this don't go after those animals that are just crazy get animals that are completely docile you want to be able to have a positive start to your ranch you don't want to be struggling with crazy animals that just goes with any industry but you really want to focus on that with bison these guys are a absolute blast to raise i fully enjoy every single day that i come home to them look out into the field and see them either sitting grazing or playing tag literally playing tag in the field with each other these guys will weather storms they will weather heat you do not have to feed them as much hay in the winter because their metabolism slows down there are tons and tons and tons of benefits that i could go on about with these animals i want to just talk about with this video on what to focus on when you get started but if you are looking at getting started in raising these animals you will find that there are tons of benefits down the road with these guys so i have a video out you can click on the link above and it's on bison safety. There are things you wanna think about with these animals. You have to be safe with them. You have to think about your place in the herd. Whenever you get started raising these guys, they will tremendously change your life, but you need to think about your interaction with them. They are a large, extremely powerful animal and they are very fast. And so you really want to think about them as a wild animal and not a domesticated one because truly that's what they are. And I would say last but not least, find someone who raises bison, reach out to them. The bison community is very welcoming. Take a tour of a ranch, try to figure out what it is like to actually get started in this industry. Friend someone who raises these animals and just get to know their demeanor. Figure out what the little nuances are. There's only so much that I can give information over a video. You really have to get there firsthand and be able to see how amazing and the little challenges that you have with these animals. So find a veterinarian, talk to somebody who raises these animals, find out what things to look for, and really figure out what it's like to raise these animals before you get started i highly highly recommend it so if you're new to the videos this is my bull walking coyote we have white feather black feather red prairie little river and strong wind this is the bison herd that i have started over again and i actually started with calves again just like i recommended to you guys when when i started my last herd i started with calves with this herd we started with calves again also so I appreciate you guys listening to my take on getting started raising this majestic animal. If you haven't noticed already, we've got some new merch on our website. So the website is brokenarrowbison.net. Click on the merch page and you'll be able to scroll down and find your favorite merchandise. We really appreciate you guys supporting our channel Every click you make and every share you make on this video really pushes our ranch forward and every hat and shirt you buy really helps us go forward also. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.